Do you believe in miracles? We got Fizzle in the house. Fizzle, what what's up, Fizzle? good, man? Fizzle, glad to have you here. Let's go. This the South Harmon Podcast. Glad you here today. Hit that Patreon link if you here to stay. Dynasty best ball, that's my favorite way. 40 chess trade show. Let's make a trade today or check an AMA. You know Adam at the ATM. Mike always in the building. He gonna stay with him. They gonna start every show off with their own trade. Fantasy's a big ocean, they made their own wave. Make sure you tap in there Tuesdays and Saturdays. Tuesday night, Saturday morning, ain't no better way. Hit that notification bell when the news break. Go subscribe right now, don't get the news late. Destination Devi, that's the team. Dynasty football, man, that's my favorite thing. I remember Biggie said it was all a dream. Now people watching on their phones and computer screens. Welcome to the team. Welcome in, everybody, back to another episode of the 4D Chess Dynasty Trade Show. As you can see, Mike's still, now he is back in the States, but he's gallivanting. He's still not here. Um, we're ready for him next week. But before Mike is back, uh, I had to go ahead and bring on one of my best friends in the space, guy I've been getting pretty close with, uh, one of the best Dynasty minds. So we have a treat for you guys here on the 4D Chess Dynasty Trade Show. Everybody welcome in Scott Connor. If you're here, you already know who he is. But uh, Scott, thanks for coming in, man. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been a while. We did one of these during the season, but uh, glad to be back. And yeah, after got a lot of reps doing trades in five, so I'm ready to rock. Uh, we could probably go through. I don't know how many trades we could get before we stop. I think we could probably set the record, but now yeah, I'm ready to go, man. Glad to be here. We will. Uh, I'll tell you what, man. We're gonna be moving to doing a second episode um, when Mike gets back. Whoop. You know what? We, we could try the Guinness Book sometime down the road if you, if you, if you want to. Tonight, we just got to let it. We could try the Guinness Book if you want to sometime. All right. We'll pull yeah. up, and you know how we do it. We start off with one of our own. Scott, I'm not going to lie to you. I hadn't made a lot of moves yet because it's been, been tough this last week, I should say. Um, the leveraging game is getting to be old for a lot of the people that I play with. And um, I was able finally to get a deal done. This is a league for everyone that you've heard me talk about. I actually had every single first in this league. Not anymore. Sad day. But uh, let's see what you think, Scott. So we'll, we'll pull the trade up here. Just made this is this is hot off the press, man. This was 15 minutes before we uh, came down here to start this. So I am sending away Trevor Lawrence. Um, I'm sorry, I'm receiving Trevor Lawrence. I'm sending away the 103, uh, the 108, the 212, and Gabe Davis in best ball. Four for one in best ball never feels good, man, if we keep it real. Starting 12, it's not the most fun. But the way I viewed this was I'm going to send away, you know, Bijan goes one one I still can take him. I can take my pick at quarterback. Then I'll get the court quarterback four instead of the quarterback three, my fourth, fourth choice. 108 is one of these spots where in best ball, I'm still very interested, but it's Jordan Addison or Quentin Johnson. Like the guy in best ball, but still not all that sure of that, that asset. I'll be honest, one of the tougher ones and Mike and I hate this guy, but it's more so in the, the lineup side in best ball. You give me Gabe Davis kind of cheap. It, that That's tough for me to let go of because I think there are spike weeks there with him and that offense with Josh Allen. Um, and, and the 212 obviously is a pick that has risk but could become an asset. But I think the difference in Lawrence to 103, given all the assets I had, it kind of made sense to go ahead and do this. And I don't think I'm like wildly overpaying um, as far as values go. But, Scott, I'm, I'm curious your thoughts, man. You're getting into more best ball. Shoot it to me straight, man. If, if I screwed up, tell me. No, you didn't screw up. Listen, there, there's, I'll just say this. There's very limited opportunities to buy first round startup quarterbacks. There's very few formats where I'm going to even hesitate if the price is three firsts or less. Technically you paid, let, let's call it three firsts here. Cause the one or three, I think is worth more than a first. The one Oh eight is probably pretty square. And then the two twelve plus Gabe Davis, plus the difference between, you know, random first and the one Oh three, let's just call it three first, three and a quarter first, whatever. Right. Right. 12 teams start 12 best ball. That's that starts coming to play for me in terms of like, all right, I know I'm giving up the four for one, but the value doesn't exceed 
you know, what I'm giving up here, especially knowing you have all those other assets. It's almost like I know I have some extra insurance. So if this goes wrong, I can still fall back on some of the extra insurance or lever. You have other high picks that you could split if you wanted to as well. Correct. So I still have down to your I think options, it's a, right? Yeah, it's a smash trade. This is one of those opportunities where it's like, I have some money to spend. I'm going to go on vacation and I'm able to kind of splurge for a weekend. And I really don't care if I end up winning or losing or have a good time or not, but I'm going to take the chance. So even if you end up losing this, I don't think you're going to regret it. So I'm taking the Lawrence side all day. I, th- from the other side's perspective, I was just going to get to it. A, go ahead. It had got? to be a roster that is just absolutely dis- decrept of talent and, I typically don't tell people to look at things this way, but I do it. I'm looking at what I'm feeding you, man. I'm feeding a monster here that already has all these other firsts. Like part of me doesn't want to do this trade with you. Even if it helps me, I know it helps. It helps you enough to where I'm like, man, like I'm okay doing trades that helps helps us both. But this is just feeding into exactly why you probably acquired all of those picks. And I'm literally just handing it to you on a platter. So I think you smashed it, bro. Well, you know what's the good news is we got Scott on the trade show today. The bad news is I already have a hard time trading in leagues as it is now. People are starting to know what I'm doing, who I am. And Scott just told you don't do it ever again. So I'm I'm gonna have a hard time getting deals done like this ever again. I will say this though. How it works is uh so Melo took over a orphan in this league. As you can imagine, if nobody has their first in twenty three, there's a couple teams that wanted to be orphan filled, right? So he takes over the orphan. Um, and let's say, let's put it like this, uh, to give it the best context without getting too crazy. He had Trevor Lawrence, Joe Burrow, and Justin Fields, but this is not a appropriate roster constructed best ball team, right? So like, what do you do here? And, and I, I, let me, let me ask you this just from a thought process perspective. If you were mellow here, right? I have every single 23 pick. I have them all. You don't have like a bunch of teams that are gonna have without getting some tor- some sort of liquid first to you like how are they gonna buy tre- buy t-law off of you really they don't, they're not gonna have the assets so he, obviously he wants to split out one of his quarterbacks into multiple pieces to have a real shot at depth because he doesn't have the appropriate depth but he has three of the top you know 10 quarterbacks so knowing that would you have pushed for something back more would you have made this deal would you have just held these three knowing that I'm going to just have so much death by the end of this draft? Like, what do you do? Well, there's two, two courses of thought. I think the first thing is I, to have those three quarterbacks, it makes sense where he would go, all right, I'm going to put them out to the whole league and see who gives me the best package. That sounds great in theory until you realize that Adam has all the picks. So, like, you're going to have to go through Adam if you, quote, unquote, want the most flexible or best package. At the same time, I do kind of wonder, I might have just hold the three quarterbacks. And you know what? I'm going to wait until I'm going to let Adam step on all those landmines. Then I'm going to come in in about four or five months and figure out which package of three pieces you're going to give me then. Because I think you'd still be interested. Mm-hmm. But you Pro- would have probably. probably moved slash burned some of those other picks that we get into, you know, week eight of this season. There's going to be one of that Zay Flowers, Quentin Johnston, or Jordan Addison that you take that you're going, yikes. Not worth much, right? Like, I would have probably let you step on a lot of the landmines, and then I would still go to you and, hey, hey, man, you got a lot of depth. This is a start 12 best ball. I'm looking for a package. Maybe you throw in a future first. Maybe you throw in a, a player that you like, but you're willing to trade. I wouldn't have pulled the trigger. I would have held the three quarterbacks. That's why I think you still won the deal. But I get why he did it. He's looking at for, I'm guessing he's probably going to want to try to get closer to contending sooner rather than later. And he's like, I got two BAM tier quarterbacks already. I can start moving towards contending if I hit on a couple of these pieces. And he can now move that 103 to someone that needs a quarterback. He can right, move it down for right. a two for one. That's the big thing I think actually, Scott, that you hit on that I think actually was why the trade maybe doesn't, to your eye, fit the best scenario, Mm -hmm. but I think why there's ways he can still very much play with all these different tools. And and I'll say this too. You come into an orphan with this, right? Somebody has every single 23 pick. Scott, this is a a dumpster dive. So what this really was, was a, a, this is a team that I quarterback hoarded in the draft. 
and then liquidated them all, right? Because in best ball, even the middling quarterbacks matter. Uh, people want to have starters in best ball. So I just liquidated them all. I eventually got all the 23 picks. Like I still have my 24 first. I have Deshaun Watson on this team already. I have Kyle Pitts on this team already. Like there's not a scenario where if you're not trying to win now that like you say, oh, I can be the one in 24 or 25. Like the, you're looking at a team that has all these picks in best ball and all this youth. Like you're trying to find a way to compete because playing for next year or the following year probably doesn't make that much sense either. So I think right. based on all that, I'm not mellow. I think that I actually think mellow did as good as he could have coming through me. Like I knew when I sent this, I told him, I said, this is it. This is the best one. Uh, the trade show's coming up in 15 minutes. I probably wouldn't even make this if I know it's not going to go on the trade show, but this is my top, my top offer. Now to your point, you could have just said no and stonewalled me and then waited until later when I made all the picks. But I think, it's sometimes easier playing that game of chicken with somebody when you know they have all the picks and you know you don't want to have all just, just three quarterbacks in a start 12 league. Yep. No, I, I see both sides of it. it. It is intriguing that he had those three quarterbacks, and that's not a bad orphan to take over. Right. But you also see where, man, even if I have these three quarterbacks, it, Adam's a train that's going to be unstoppable once it starts getting moved. Because you, I think that's the other thing. When you see a sh- the biggest fear for me in leagues is when I see a smart manager that has been able to corral a market like this. Because now the only way I find an edge, sure, I can grind out edges against other players all the time. The only way they're going to find an edge against you in this league is if you get reckless. Right. Well, and that's why, and, I, did, that's why I wouldn't go past this, Scott, because I didn't actually want to get reckless. Right? Like, I didn't want right. to send... You don't, you don't have to. Exactly. You don't have to. And exactly. I think that's where you have the dynasty discipline, like Ray talks about, dynasty discipline. I've seen a lot of people accumulate close to what you just did. And then they splurge it all in one week. And they go, I have the greatest team ever on paper. And then in six months, they go, they're back to a above average middling team that I'm not scared of anymore. Right. It's like the way you can turn this into, you pick some players, you pick a bunch of players, you sell off a couple players that you're willing to bet against for future picks. All of a sudden next year, Adam has a good team. Maybe you don't win the title next year. Maybe you just finish top four. Right. But you know what? You got 324 first. You got a couple seconds. You got some more picks that now you can go to the other team that just got orphaned and go, hey, you interested in kind of going the same route that we did last year with this? I mean, you just keep perpetually taking advantage of the teams that have to go a direction, and they can't go the direction that you're already going. Otherwise, they're not going to beat you. Yeah, and, you know, interestingly, Scott, you brought up some points that I will say, if you really lean into one direction – and this is something that I think people need to talk about real quick before we get into the next trade. Right now, the wide receiver market is where everybody wants to be, obviously, outside of the quarterbacks and super flex, right? So if you just constantly keep chasing the receivers, you just have to land the right ones to end up winning that. Like, you don't have any different variants from other teams in your league. You're going to be built the same way, right? What I have in this league is I was I was able to convince every other team, so 11 other teams, that they can go compete. So that, that market still exists, right? So guess what's going to happen throughout the year here? I have all these young picks. I have all these this depth. And there's going to be teams that are com- competing, that want to compete, that can't, that now they have to come to who for all the youth. So I, I am the one person that is in the driver's seat on the teams that don't have winning and that, okay, like I got to get off of these assets that are aging. And like, what do I do? Because if I trade them to the other guys that are competing, I'm going to get aging assets back too. That doesn't help me. So there's a, there's a big edge. I think that you can play up, maybe not to quite this degree, but if you hoard a lot of one type of assets and you're in the minority there, you will now create leverage in that scenario. So I kind of wanted to walk through that before we get to the next trade. I mean, you do because now, you know, you go in the middle of the season, someone's going, man, I just can't keep up. I got this. I got this Derrick Henry and this Devonte Adams, and all of a sudden you pull it off, and you know you get both of them for a first and two seconds, and it's like what the hell? And it, it, nobody right. else was able to offer what you did because you're right. the you're the only store that's open that has those products. So I good job, good job. Yep. So that's I mean, and I also think uh, let me just say, Melo, I, I I think that most people will say you maybe lost a trade, and I think he said I don't feel good about it before he sent it, but he also I think knew that because it's coming from me even down the road, probably not going to get much better. So um, I don't think you did horribly. I think given what you had in an orphan, you're trying to do the best you can with what you walked into. 
All right, Scott, it's time to talk about this. Uh, Jordan Love polarizing one. Last night, Jay Rich was on AMA, kind of in on Jordan Love a little bit, it seems. Um, curious your thoughts here. Before we get to the trade itself on Jordan Love, are you are you willing to buy him? Are you looking to get him and trade him away based on what's happening in the market? Or are you someone that's willing to hold him on teams? It's funny. I've only had one Jordan Love share in my entire dynasty career, and I have a lot of leagues. Uh, and I sold it for a 23 first back at the beginning of 2022. So it's been – or actually, no, it was actually before the yeah, – end of the 2021 season when it looked like Rodgers wasn't going to play anymore. And that's it. Never had any other Jordan Love. So it's weird because I feel weird speaking about the Jordan Love market because I literally haven't been involved in it in okay. the last year or so. Uh, I'd still take the 24 first. It, it's it's liquid. I get it. If you got a bunch of picks. If this was you last year and you have 11 or 12 first, I could see picking one out where it's like, okay, I'll compromise with you. This isn't the worst one, but it's by far not one of the best ones. I'll send it and just make a bet on Jordan Love. But if this is my – here's here's where you get yourself into trouble in Dynasty. Mm -hmm. you know, you're weak at quarterback. You have your one first. And you're blowing it in April on Jordan Love. Scott, How many outs is there for – We don't even know if they picked up the fifth-year option yet. They have to pick it up by May. Right. And I – honestly, I don't see a reason they would because what what is he going to do this year to make them say – all right, we don't have a chance to get him back. Worst case scenario, what do they do? They non-exclusive franchise tag him yes year, just like the Ravens did to Lamar. And what's he going to do? Turn that down? Is a team going to really give up two firsts for Jordan Love to sign him to a big contract? So I, I don't think they're going to pick up the fifth year option. Maybe they do. But the risk and reward like, is the reason why you just hit it right. Because the risk is if you pick up the fifth year option and he's terrible, you're stuck with that. But the the reward is if, if you don't and he's great or he looks like he could be the part, you still have his rights by the franchise. So you pay a little more, but you don't have to take on all that risk. And if he's so good that you regret not picking it up, guess what? You probably hit on a decent quarterback. Right. That, and that's a problem everybody wants to have in the NFL, as in Superflex. Yep. So, so just blowing my first for Jordan Love in April, there is 10 ways that that can burn me. There's not a lot of paths where he can help me. And here's the other thing. Even if he's good, what do you expect out of Jordan Love? Is he, what's his warp? Feels like he's, you're buying him because you need a placeholder. You, you're you're quote-unquote weak at QB. Yep. And I'm going, man, looking at some of these other teams in my league, okay, now I went from the eighth best QB room to the fifth best QB room. But I blew my first. Meanwhile, there's four teams that have better QB rooms than me. They still have their first. So you got to think about that. Like, what is this move actually doing when you give up your one really gold chip future piece? And I certainly don't want to blow that in April on a quarterback I've literally never seen play. Well, see, and, and that's where, um, I don't know, I, I think about things a lot of different ways. And I guess I, I kind of phrased the question to you before the trade because that, that was where you led me right back to. I think the only way that this really works, like I think odds of Jordan Love, let's even say he is the starter for Green Bay for the whole season, of him being like a warp difference maker are super slim. I really believe that strongly. Now, could it happen? I won't say it can't. Like Geno Smith was a warp difference maker. I'm not going to sit here and tell you it can't happen, but I think it's very slim. But I do think, like I'm, I'm try I always try to think on both sides of the lenses and what I would do if I was, this trade's already done, this is what I have. I think the one scenario you do have is if he starts and has a game or two well, right? There's already resurgence in his value. Like, I, I'm flabbergasted and floored when I look at Keep Tread Cut and he's ahead of some of the guys he's ahead of. So if he has a couple good games, that I think is where you could make it up in a lineup start 11 because maybe someone's like, okay, I'm in on Jordan Love. We saw what happened with Rodgers. They did that to Rodgers to Brett Favre. It's like, okay, he got to sit. Maybe you can play that up for more than just a generic 24 first. I think that's the only way you end up winning this because I don't think the odds are very good of Jordan Love coming in and being like, oh, man, Jordan Love's a top 10 dynasty performer at, at, at Superflex and helping you win a league. I don't see that happening. Yeah, and honestly, the difference between whether you'd be able to flip him for more than this, even if he's pretty good, even if he's Geno Smith, a lot of times come down to the perception of the player, right? Mm -hmm. Like. Yeah. I would prefer Jordan Love to Trey Lance, but if you told me which player I would rather have if the 10% outcome or better happens, it's Trey Lance. 
Of course. He's the guy that if he has a QB 12 season, people are paying two first next year. Jordan Love has a good season. It's kind of like, well, it's Jordan Love. You know, they didn't pick up his fifth-year option. I'll give you a first and a second. You took all the risk and you netted a second. Well, so I think well, that's another thing is this is a guy true. that's had some stink for a couple of years. Like, it, his market may be limited partially by his perception, kind of like Daniel Jones. He's well, very you know, similar to Daniel funny. Jones. It's funny. This is what's crazy, though. Keep – Daniel Jones, at least, was actually pretty decent in warp. Daniel Jones was like top 12 dynasty or, uh, you know, performance in fantasy. Jordan Love is still all projection. He's come out of nowhere. What's wild is he is, uh, they're back to back and keep trade cut rankings. And this is with Jordan Love doing nothing. So I guess my point is somebody might see if he does, has a couple good weeks early or, or at least decent enough weeks where that hype train rolls because of how people kind of get very reactionary in this market. I, I'm with you. I think overall for smart managers, like you're not going to see him get to the next tier because after that you go to Tua, a rich Dak. Like there's, I don't think that comes, but maybe you find a, another team that's needy at quarterback that you could, you know, fleece for more. But I think it's too much risk here, man. Uh, all, all that's trying to find. I always try to find a way for the other trade to make sense. But to me, it's just not, nah, I want the 24 first. There's so many quarterbacks in this class. There's so many players in this class. I, I, Even if you told me I had to wait, I'd rather have that. But I think there's so many things you can do with that even in the season. So uh, I'm happy as hell to cash out on Jordan Love for a uh, 24 first at this point. 12-team uh, super flex half-point PPR lineup start nine offense and six on defense. Scott, curious your thoughts on this, man. It's, it's gross right now, right, because Elijah Moore goes over to Cleveland. Um Donovan Peoples-Jones, I think, in lineup leagues now, especially in half-point PPR, is kind of a – you don't, what are you going to do with him? Maybe he's still good, but he feels like he could be roster clogger for people. Uh, you got the 404, which is pretty far down the line. But you also got Zeke where it's like – like this feels really gross as a trade. So I am curious your thoughts as a whole on this one. It looks terrible. Uh, but I think this is a great trade to illustrate how important it is to understand values of roster spots, understanding the format, understanding what's the cutoff, what's the quote unquote wide receiver threshold, right? In a start nine half PPR, uh, Donovan Peoples Jones is outside of it. Uh, the 404 is pretty much irrelevant. I would take Zeke pretty easily here. Uh, and I'd actually be happy that I got one consolidated asset, even if Zeke gives me. Let's just say he gives me a 50% chance of even being on a team by the time we get to the season. There's a chance he just doesn't sign anywhere because he doesn't have any incentive. He's made $73 million in his career. Mm -hmm. He may be going, yep, yeah, I'm going to stay in shape. I'm going to wait for that injury. I'll jump in. He feels a lot like a Latavius Murray where he could sign somewhere week two and he's starting by week three. True. The team goes, yeah, the one thing we can do is give him the ball. You know, like it, and I think that why would he go and – bust ass against a rookie and a veteran in training camp to win the backup job in Cincinnati or something like that, unless they're going to pay him. Sure. I think you and I agree. No, nobody's handing Zeke more than two, three million, right? Like at most, right. unless they're desperate. So I can see him lingering and not signing for a while. The 5% chance that he ever makes my lineup in a start nine, I'd rather have Zeke. I don't even think it's close. I, I'd be elated to be able to get it's not even getting Zeke, bro. It's getting rid of Donovan Peoples Jones in the four oh four. Yeah, I think the I think that is a, a point I was gonna make too, is that in this format, um, the four oh four now I guess IDP might convolute it a touch. You could get some IDP stuff, but overall, like I want to get rid of the four oh four here in this format pretty easily. So like in, when in it comes six to defense, there's no scarcity either on IDP. Right, right. I play in a I play in a couple IDP that are like full idp leagues yes that would change it but in six where it's no you're probably starting two linebackers two defensive backs two defensive linemen like effectively you can stream so i don't think it changes the value of the picks that much okay good i'm glad that you brought that in because I, I only play in a handful of idp so that, that that's the one part where i get i'm not sure and i don't know if he has any scoring settings that sway it but overall here i think i want to get rid of 404 easy so when it's straight up people's jones for zeke I guess with Watson, if Elijah Moore is terrible, like DPJ is okay. But at the same point, in a start nine, let's even say Elijah Moore wasn't traded. Now, this trade, it looks a little different, but like still how realistic is it for you to start him all the time? And now we have to factor in that Elijah Moore has come over, that Njoku's there, that, that Cooper's still there. 
I, I would much rather have a running back, and it's half point PPR. So it's just it's not a guy I want to start um, in this format at all. So that's why well, I want to. Let me ask you this. Go ahead. In this league, you put Donovan Peoples Jones on the block, and you ask for a second. What happens? Crickets. You get laughed at, right? Crickets, man. Crickets. You right. get a laughing so you, emoji in the sleeper chat. You get crickets in the inboxes. It's just you know, it's a disaster for everybody. Odds you even get a third for DPJ in this format? Probably fifty fifty. I think somebody will send it to you. Uh, it also depends on the league, right? If I'm in a league and it's everybody's really sharp, like if it's all people that are very degenerate types, you might not, honestly. But I think in I a mean, lot of leagues for a third. Are you sending a third? Are you sending no, a third for no, DPJ and a half no, PPR? You're going, I'm not. that's just not even a player I want. He's probably worth a third, right? But think but about this But it's not how though. I would want a roster construct. Think about it this way, too. I I would so much rather in the third round take my shots on these tight ends even that um, like might or end up back, right? or running back too. But there's so many like I'm saying running back. But what I'm not doing is is shooting that on a receiver again, right? So I'm not yeah. trading that for another receiver that's older in people's Jones. You know what I'm saying? That's kind of what I'm getting at here. Yeah. So that 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 one's pretty easily Zeke for us. Um, all right, Scott. Let's look at another one here. Twelve team superflex uh, PPR lineup start eleven. Um, this is a big one. This is Buzzard, uh, big member here for you know the South Harmon guys. He's a, a Nate List guy. He's getting Devonte Smith, Jalen Waddle, Justin Fields, and the one hundred and two. He is sending away Stephon Diggs and Josh Allen and uh, also Travis Etienne. Uh, this is a twelve team superflex PPR lineup start eleven. So Scott, in this format here. Basically, the way I'm looking at it is you're downgrading from Allen to Fields. In the process, you're picking up Waddle and Smith in the 102 for Diggs and ETN. Uh, obviously, you, you do get you're you're giving away the Allen and Diggs stack. I think is one of the big things to note here. But what what's your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, if you're going to trade away Josh Allen, like this is the type of trade, not just the value, but the type of trade you're looking. You're looking for another top nine quarterback. You're probably looking for another high end asset. So in a two for one, let's call it Fields in the 102 for Allen. I think you'd probably get split votes on that. A lot of people would like that 102 because they can do a lot with it. And then you look at Waddle and, and Smitty versus Diggs and ETN. I, I don't think that's crazy to say that's just a two for two. I know there's a running back involved in there, but. You know, in a lineup start 11, I, I'm okay trading away a running back unless, like, ETN is the only running back I have. Uh, so I, I think I'm good with uh, taking the package. I mean, if you're if you're interested in tearing off of Allen, like, this is about the best you're going to get from a design standpoint. I get it from the team getting Allen and Diggs. They're going, man, I'm just chasing the massive warp. They probably have a pretty good team. They're trying to upgrade. Put it this way, I couldn't send out the package to get Josh Allen like this. But process wise, I'd be sitting there going, you know what? I've probably already built around fields. Just going to make the bet on fields. I'm not giving up the 102 to tear up at quarterbacks. Just not something that I do. Okay. So, so what you're saying is you want the buzzard side and, and there's not really a scenario in this lineup start 11 where you would do this. You would send this type of equity away to get Josh Allen in the, in the stack. I mean, my rule of thumb is shy of Patrick Mahomes. I'm really not interested in tearing up if I already have a top nine quarterback. Maybe True. I'm being a little rigid on the quarterbacks, but I mean, I get these questions all the time. Oh, I got Deshaun Watson. Would you add a first to get like Joe Burrow? You know, like, no, I'm not, I'm not interested in adding to right. a top eight quarterback to go get QB three. Right. And, I mean, essentially that's what he's doing. Sure. Fields could bust out and you're left holding the bag without a good quarterback. I get that. But if I have fields, I'm not interested in adding the 102 essentially to get Josh Allen. Is there a scenario where it changes at all if this is Patrick Mahomes? I mean, I like Mahomes a little bit more than Allen, and Mahomes is, I think, the one guy that he's proven he's had multiple QB1 seasons with just a, a vast array of different players around him. Right. I think this last I, year was I what made that the it. Right. Yes, I could justify it if it's Mahomes. But I still feel a little queasy. Like it, this, this just isn't the type of trade where I'm looking to make if I've already bet on fields. And I think it, that I'm much more interested in paying. I'd pay everything on that side without fields just to get Josh Allen, and I wouldn't even think twice. And yeah. I think a lot of people would go, "Wow, 102 Smitty and Waddle just to get Allen or get Jalen Hurts or like I would do that. That's yes. totally different than I'm throwing fields in the trade." 
hundred percent. I think that's the thing too. Um, even in lineup start eleven, we talk about more of the shallow ones, nine and ten. Even at eleven, if you similar, it, <laughs> there's not an asset up top which isn't like okay, I could start this or I have valuable right. starter value. Right? There's nothing up there in this four for three that's like okay, I, I, I'm cutting fat here. There's it doesn't exist up there. One hundred two is going to be a great pick because it's either the top quarterback in the class unless. Someone decides to pass on Bijan because they don't think they can roster him. You give me the top QB in this class. You give me Fields. You give me Waddle and Smith. Like these are all guys I'm elated for. So as much as I do like Josh Allen, like there's risk with ETN. I think ETN still could be good for a year or two, but there's a lot of risk there. And Diggs also, like he could he be the best guy and warp it receiver in this trade? Yes, but you also have to acknowledge the age thing that he has going on and the fact that keep trade cut is showing you where his trade value is like we know a resurgence is coming when the season starts but if an injury happens we saw what happened to cooper cup there's just so many less outs with the players that i'm getting back there versus up top it's man it's all young exciting things that i can i, I can take these four pieces and do so many other things with them too that's the other thing yeah, and i think the 102 is a, actually a pick where let's say you don't have another quarterback besides you know right. the justin fields now I can add to that 102. I may be able to go buy Justin Herbert, T Law, Burrow. You know, now I'm sitting here going, man, you sure I added in a 24 first, but let's say right now I throw a 24 first on that other side, and instead of that 102, you put Joe Burrow in that trade. 100%. Now I'm getting two BAM tier quarterbacks. I, I'll pay an extra first. So I think it gives you more flexibility in that four for three and a start 11. There's a much more active market. 100%. Because 102, right, has that allure of the quarterback so if you go 102 like l let's just say for a, se a second let's say you go 102 pick even which one let's even say it's waddle because he's highly valued so let's go 102 waddle in your 24 first you got to pay that for one of the elite quarterbacks really all you did here was downgrade from Diggs to smith which we don't like but i'm fine with but you got another top end quarterback like that's 40 chess like that literally would be 40 chess if you could do that so um yep. I think on a lot of different ways I want the buzzard side. I think the thing is we're already seeing people that are scared of fields, which I think is interesting, um, given that they just didn't take a quarterback at one, and they're surrounding him with DJ Moore. Like I think now more than ever I would be a little more in on fields just because they committed to him. Um, anyway, I mean, we got what's the worst-case scenario for fields? He ends up he's, – he's Lamar Jackson in two years. He's in the same exact spot Lamar is right now, where we're just questioning what is his NFL future, which right. is going to impact his dynasty value. But I'll, you know what? If I'm left holding the bag on fields in three years and he's in Lamar's shoes, part of that's on me because he's going to score enough points over the next year or two where there are going to be outs on fields. 100%. Absolutely. There's going to be better passing games too. Like this is quarterback five last year mm -hmm. and was abysmal as a passer, 2,200 passing yards. There'll be better passing games ahead for him. There's going to be plenty of times to sell if you do want to sell. Um, but there's also you could just ride out a cheat code upside, take one of the house at any point. So I, I'm all aboard that side. All right, 12-team uh, Superflex PPR lineup start 10, Scott. Big big trades we're looking at here. Jamar Chase, 111, 102 again, 104, um, are being acquired by Bracer97. Schumer, our guy, is acquiring Josh Allen and T. Higgins. What say you this time, Scott? So lineup start 10, it's really hard to turn down getting that elite quarterback. I know mm -hmm. it's expensive, but mm -hmm. I'm looking – let's just say I, I don't think I would pay the 104 for T. Higgins in a super flex just because it gives me some leverage at quarterback. Let's call Higgins worth the 105. Let's just say he's close with the JSN Gibbs pick, right? Right, market-wise, so just, yeah. Let's just, let's just wash those two out. Okay. And you're sitting here going chase 102 and the 111. A start 10, that 111 is – Whatever. You're looking for a place where you can throw it in and actually extract an actual first round value for it. Unless you and hit the rare Justin Jefferson like he was at one eleven. But this receiver class isn't every, that. Everyone with that one eleven hit hit on that Justin Jefferson, you know, or they hit on that yeah. AJ Brown. Of course <laughs> right. they did. <laughs> So I'm, I've, I've, I listen. This is not a perfect like in a startup. You frame where these picks would go. I wouldn't want to give this up in a startup. True. But in a league that's already established in a start ten. Give me, give me Josh Allen. If I have anything close to a team that's kind of ready to go, and I assume the team that's trading away all the picks and chase is probably going, man, I got a second BAM tier quarterback now. Like this is the type of team where, let's say, I have Mahomes and a couple pieces. 
Like, j- just give me the Mahomes and Allen side, and I'll just go to bat with whatever else I have in a start 10. So I'm taking the Allen side. And you're getting Higgins in the deal. So Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Like, Mike and I already talk a lot about the tear down. Now, we will admit that, you know, we, we were a little wrong last year on receivers. Um, not by little, I mean a lot wrong. But, like, I'm still getting back, though, right? I still, in a tear down sense, am okay getting off of Chase to Higgins if I'm getting appropriate value back, right? This is where I'm getting the player in start 10 that I want. Lineup start nine, start 10. If you are tuned into this or Dynasty Trades in five with Scott. And, Lineup start 9 and 10 is all about the super flex advantage. If you can have two elite quarterbacks, it's just so hard to catch up to those guys. And I like Chase a lot still, man. Like if you tell me I can have Chase with elite quarterbacks, I want that. But if it's what it, if I have to get rid of him to get an elite quarterback, I'm going to do it because there's so few and far between. It feels steep, man. It does feel steep, but the fact that I'm getting Higgins back on the other side I think makes it uh easy Allen here because I would send Jamar Chase 111 and probably even, like you said, 102. But if I just did Jamar Chase 111 and 104 for Allen, that's a smash. You're overpaying on Higgins for 102. But I think any way you try to cut this, I think Allen outweighs the value in warp. And as far as like, it's really hard to trade for these guys when you don't send an elite quarterback back. Well, let me ask you this. Would you do this deal if you take out the 111 and T Higgins? That's where it's getting okay. You're paying. That would be that that oh, that becomes that becomes more face value. I still think I might, but I will say this: like you have two chances at quarterback rookie hits, and you have the top or top two receiver. I think that's where it's risky in this format. But like I could see it. Um, I still think I probably would. I don't know that I would actually pay that for Josh Allen, but I think I'd rather have Josh Allen than that, if that makes sense. Like I don't know that I would want to send that for him. Well, but. let me let me frame it this way because this is this is Ford Chess. Let's say we take the Higgins and the one eleven out, okay? All right, deal. Yeah. And the person still takes the package, Chase one oh two and one oh four. Right. The Ford Chess move for them is to now turn around and go one oh four, yeah. What pisses you off is they now trade one oh two and a second and grab Lamar Jackson. Yep. And now yep. you're going, shit, they got Chase, Lamar, and the 104 for my Josh Allen, and that's where you're going, well, I wish well, I would have gotten that package for Josh Allen. You know what I mean? Well, look, I've seen uh, on this trade show, I mean, Scott, it's almost every week. And sometimes I have to not even put them on the trade show just because it's it's getting annoying. What if 102 was Kyler Murray? Because that, that trade has happened on levels I can't explain to you. It, it's always happening. I, I think the point of doing this trade, if you're thinking about it that way, the only way you would make it is if you know your league is a market where you put that 102 on the block and you're willing to kick in, maybe not even another first. But I in a lot of leagues, if I pick, if I put that 102 up and I'm willing to kick in an Iuke or a Judy or someone like that, right. I can snag Lamar. I can snag Deshaun Watson. You insert one of those guys in this deal instead of that 102. Easy. Now I'm sitting here going, damn, I'm down tiering from Allen and I'm still getting Lamar or Watson and you're throwing in Jamar Chase? Okay, I'm interested in doing that because I stick within my roster construction and I just traded for, you know, a, a, a BAM tier skill player. That that I think is a big thing too is understanding your league and lineup start 10. Like, if you make a move like this, I think this is something that I've found that I've done and eventually I have to take all these picks that are accrued and then I just go overpay for my homes just to have it done. If you are in a market where someone will sell Lamar right now, if someone will sell Herbert, mm-hmm. right, this is where you want to take the top side. But if it's not that way and it's like, all right, I'm going to end up with just the rookie hopes and I don't have a replacement at quarterback, it can work out for you. But uh, you probably have a year of warp lost. You probably have a year of waiting and you have a lot of trades to make. And if you can't get into the league quarterbacks, it's it's tough sitting on the outside with that deal. So uh, I think knowing your league is a big one with that one. All right. This is a very easy, crusty one here. Scott, 12 team super flex start 10 lineup, half uh, point tight end premium. We have uh, some Ajay P. Ryan. For those of you who don't know, Scott is a big Bengals fan. So he's been uh, very accustomed to understanding some Ajay P. Ryan. Process or some Ajay here, um, Scott? I mean,. Come on. If I would have showed you this trade a year ago, you'd have laughed at me. Uh, so uh, the fact that you can just say that, it's, I mean, yeah, I'm taking the 212. I, I mean, I, I would have laughed at you now, but, uh, you know, I'm still. It, I, well, it, it, 
it just to think that the 212 is the best that I can do with my 212 is to go get some AJ P Ryan. And you know what? Even if he's good, even if he's a top 30 running back, which I think is even an aggressive projection for him, like what are we doing? This is a 212 where I would rather take this 212 and trade it for two future thirds. Right. And buy spot starts during the season in a start to start ten lineup league. And you know what? There's a decent chance that there may be a period during the season where guess who's a spot start running back? Someone's willing to sell for a third. So well, it's, it, it just makes no sense to buy to buy this in okay April. This is timing, man. This, see, I, it is funny because it's it's silly, but at the same time, the the actionable thing here is timing, right? So if this is a twenty four to uh, what you project is a, a 24 to 12, right? And so my JP Ryan is the lead back and Javante Williams uh, re-injures himself and it's his backfield. I'm good. Okay, cool. You want to send your 24 second in season for Samaje week six. And he's like, all right, this is going to be a guy I can spot start. Totally different conversation than we're having right now where it's, why are you doing this in April? Like I can guarantee you, Almost with certainty, whatever asset you take at 212 because of the way the dynasty clock works is going to be valued ahead of Samaje for months. Like this is just, this is not, this makes no sense for the Pyrex 34 side, in my personal opinion, based on the way I view things. The old, yeah, and uh, to your point, the only, and Erica, I talked about this on America's Game a lot, the only way you make a deal like this is I'm getting Samaje Ryan and Rashad Penny. Mm-hmm. I'm getting a two for two, one. Two spot starts because I'm buying it now. Right. Well, it, I, I'm getting two shots, which basically tells me I'm still getting the leverage. Now, it's not the leverage that's great for the time of the year because it's rookie draft time and I'm buying, you know, six, seventh year veteran running backs. Right. But give me the two bodies. It's the same thing when you're going down further. Like, why am I going to trade a 304 or a future third for a random running back when, now, if you're going to offer me three of them, you're going to give me three bodies. Okay. I'm interested, but a one for one here. When it's a one for one, there's no leverage on either side. I mean, give me the pick. Uh, it doesn't even matter who the players are. A lot of times. Yeah, I'm 100 percent with you. Um, all right, so let, let's move on from this one, Scott. So we are looking at now another big trade. This is seven goat rings. Uh, he's got a reputation here. So let's see what he did. Um, Twelve team super flex best ball start eleven. This one is half point per completion, Scott. So that does a little bit of moving of things. Baker Mayfield, Nick Chubb, Cole Komet, a 24 first in the 310 uh, are being acquired for seven goat rings for Jacoby Myers, T. Higgins, Devin Singletary, and Damian Pierce. What do you think, man? A lot of moving parts here. Yeah, there is. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at this trade for like the third or fourth time. You read it off and I'm still looking at it, trying to figure out like where, where did it start? Like, I think a cool thing to look at is like the origin of this trade. Like, where did it start and then where did it end up? Like, what was the first piece that somebody was after? I assume it probably had to do with the, the Higgins, Pierce, Chubb in a first side, and then it kind of just morphed into all these extra pieces. To me, I, I'm actually a little higher on Damian Pierce than a lot of people because I think he's he's crossed about 90% of the thresholds that you'd want to hit to, to where if anyone listened to the most recent uh, Destination Dynasty show, like... He's checked a lot of those boxes. Even if he ends up being crusty, mm -hmm. I mean, he feels like he he's he's on track to have like kind of like a David Montgomery type career, you know, where like he's just gonna be there. He's not gonna get cucked in the draft and disappear. Sure. So I don't think it's crazy to say Chubb in a first for T. Higgins and Damian Pierce is square straight up. And then it oh. just comes down to you know can't. Can, if this is a team where Baker Mayfield's like my third, fourth, or fifth quarterback, like I'm okay moving him for the other pieces. It is a start eleven. It is best ball. I'm fine taking on Singletary and Myers, and I'm I, I commit doesn't move the needle at all because I assume this is no tight end premium because it's not listed. He's just Cor a throw correct. Piece. It's not. It's no tight end premium designation. He said. He said that. Um, I I think what is interesting about this, right? So when I start thinking about this, the three ten. Probably not a piece you're relying on, but maybe you end right. up hitting something decent there, which is where in best ball, I, I do like that. But I'll say this. Mm -hmm. I, I like Jacoby Myers quite a bit in best ball. I really do. Even going to Vegas, all the stuff with him, it wasn't the best landing spot. T. Higgins is a guy Mike and I are very high on. We've been on record for that. Singletary and Pierce, I think, is where it's weird. Like, um, like I don't really like to do this where it's – like you may not consider this handcuffing, but like I don't – 
I don't know. I just I don't like having all the backfield and rostering like one spot. Now you might go the Eric Burnett approach and be like, I'll just take all their points. I just don't know if this backfield is going to shake out like that. Um, I don't know. I just I, I'm worried that what I'm worried about for four rings uh, RO is that if your team's not rostered right, which I don't know, and you send away if that is a because here's the thing half point completion. If that is the main thing, I was going to say the quarterbacks is, is huge. The, the quarterback man, huge. Be, I'm guessing the scoring is pretty. I mean, what is that? A hundred and hundred points for Baker just on completions alone, probably. Assuming that's he what starts I'm, half the year. That's what I'm saying, man. Is like okay, I think that he's getting Baker in this deal because of the point per completion. And if this team is worth betting against, oh my goodness! If I have a chance at any of these quarterbacks in 24, that's why I think I. Just I, my brain is wanting me to take that other side. Now, if I on the converse side, I don't love even in best ball selling my flexibility at this point. But if I'm like rostered really, really well and I don't really need Baker and I have like four or five quarterbacks and he's just whatever, I'd probably be willing to do this because I, I, I can see I, where if you're rostered right, the bottom side just makes more sense. You know what I mean? I'd probably to to you've kind of talked me into it. I probably would have to go through the warp matrix or the scoring matrix on the quarterbacks. Correct. Because I think that that's an undervalued part of this too. Is I'm in some leagues where the quarterback scoring is so ridiculous that I mean, listen, you, you wouldn't you wouldn't trade T Higgins for the rights to draft Bryce Young. You know what I mean? It's because the quarterback scoring is so advantageous that I mean, forget about just having Baker Mayfield. If you have a quarterback that is good the scoring just far outweighs everybody else in the league so i can see that too i'm I'm guessing seven goat rings looked at that team and goes all right if damian pierce t higgins and jacoby myers are going to beat me then they're going to beat me but maybe the team on the bottom doesn't really know what they're doing and (laughs) i'm i'm stealing his quarterback and i'm stealing his 24 first if it goes to shit, all of a sudden I'm sitting on, you know, Drake May or Caleb Williams or in striking distance to get one of those guys. Yeah. And I still won the trade in points. So I can see where he's coming from. I think I've switched sides now that we talked through it. And, and just, you know, what's interesting though, and you think about that, right? You could hold it until it's, it becomes Caleb, uh, Caleb Williams, Drake May or whatever quarterbacks uh, ascend. I know uh, Matt Bruning, shout out campus to Canton's very high on Quinn, but you could hold it to that point. But there's also like, to what you're saying if it's let's say it's projecting like a non-playoff team like what can that buy me in half if point it's trending per downwards and right seven go- what can that buy me in the playoff run because here's seven the thing goat too. Will turn that into two more starters man you don't even want to see that trade on here which is why i'm going to move this trade off here because uh we're going to have enough <laughs> of seven goat rings uh oh man look at him pleasing somebody else i'm glad seven goat rings you you lost a couple deals on here this one i i I think it, it. what I like is that it's close enough to it doesn't look egregious, but I think I want your side. 12-team Superflex, uh, 1.5 tight end premium, start 12. We're best ball here, Scott. This is a big trade, man. T-Rock and Gabe, a couple of guys we, we are uh, buddies with. Uh, both shitheads. Gabe is in the, uh, the Heisman tier at the Destination Debbie. So we have Justin Herbert in the 4-12 and the 5-12. So, like – I mean, I'll talk to you all about depth and all that in best ball, but 412 and 512 are getting outside of areas I care about. 103, 111, 109, 203, 24 second. So if you look at this in a scenario of it's like more, it's getting close to five for one. Um, Cause I already had a trade similar to this where it was Lawrence versus Herbert. So I'm curious your thoughts here, all liquidity, what your thoughts are here. I, mean, I think this is a little bit of a better haul than what you got uh, in your deal for Lawrence. I mean, this is getting three, three firsts, and then the two hundred three, which in a start twelve bus ball, like that's a great pick this right. year, right? Uh, especially like that's a pick where I'm like, all right, I'm going to draft a guy that I know is going to hit my lineup, hopefully. So I mean, effectively, it's four pieces plus that twenty four second, like that could buy another piece, you know. So it's effectively a five for one deal, right? which I'm guessing that's why it was done because most of the time people would look at this and say, oh, yeah, I'll pay three first and two seconds for Herbert. Right. But I'm, I'm, I'm guessing the team that got the package is probably sitting here going, you know what, if I hit on that 103 at quarterback or if I'm able to move that to something that I feel comfortable with at quarterback, this, this could actually reshape my roster. So I, I guess – Put it this way, I'd still probably lean the Herbert side because I really have a hard time turning down getting a quarterback like that. But I'm also guessing this is the best trade you're 
you're ever going to get if you are selling Herbert. Best ball From just wise, a structure standpoint, yeah. you're not getting anything better ever. I mean, especially if you're in a league with you guys, like I think you'd struggle to ever send basically five top 15 picks for one player. You're just going to start 12. I had extra assets, and I almost had the point of like with all the picks I had, Scott, in the trade you saw, I was like worried if they all make me make them. Like what do I do with rosters? Like how, do, how many do I have to cut down? So in a way, yeah. cutting that down, even in best ball, was part of the plan. Five, but I told him, I said, this this is top dollar. Like, this is your best offer you're going to get now. I was not going to pay a fifth piece. These are all. Like, What's the roster size in this? I'm curious. Because that does matter in these trades. When you're starting to do five for ones, if it's. You know what? I don't Royal think I'm Rumble's actually. Cut down to 25, then it matters. I don't actually think I'm in this league is what's unfortunate about it. Because I would love okay. to know. Um, you know what? In the comments. Uh, T-Rock, I know you'll be watching Gabe. Uh, anyone else is in the league. Put it in the comments because Scott, go ahead and, and to your point on on the roster size. Like, what 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 would the numbers need to look like? I mean, I don't think there's a. a I typically operate under like forty percent of starters to total roster spots is like mm -hmm. a, a sweet spot for very straight line value for all spots. Mm -hmm. But I know I'm in some where it's start 12, 26 man rosters. I'm in some where it's start 10, 35 man rosters. Like you can just tell when you're in those leagues the market slowly will adjust as the managers get better. Right. People start to slowly adjust where it's like, yeah, okay, start 10 with 35-man rosters. Guess what? Those bottom like 15, 10 spots are worthless. Really? So you should almost be looking at them in a different way than you are in a league like this where if this is this is 30-man rosters, like the, the team that needs players could have really hit the sweet spot with the five pieces because he probably still got five pieces within the 30-man rosters where he's going, okay, I got five good assets. Yeah. Same time, like Royal Rumble, I keep throwing that out there, but I know that's a popular league that a lot of people that listen will know about. 25. Cuts down to 25. I know it's 14, but you got to be real careful when you're tearing off that mid-second for two-thirds. You know, you're like, okay, I can hit on the two-thirds. That's great. Yep. Yep. I don't know who to pick in that second, but then yep. you cut down and you go, man, there's five players I got to cut, and I only have two or three that I want to cut. Like I wish I could go back and go the other way on one of those trades. So I think you have to be cognizant of that. If this is 28 or less roster spots, I'm kind of okay with the Herbert side a little bit more because what I can pick up off waivers may be able to find me a little production. If this is 32, 35 I almost am like it's going to be real tough to replenish those extra pieces on the Herbert side. So I think that does matter. I, I agree. I, I think I look at this in um, a lens of not necessarily picking a side. And I know people are going to be like, oh, that's cheap. I want to know who do you like here? Well, here's the thing, right? If I had an excess quarterback and in best ball, I'm like, you know what? Let me see if I can get – similar to the deal I had with Melo, right? I want to sell one of these. I'm getting uh, – there is – Everything here is second round and north. Like these matter a lot in best ball where we're starting 12. I don't even care if it's 25, 30, whatever it is. Now, to your point, like it does matter as far as where you're going to make roster decisions. But five for one this this high, if I have the quarterback to play with, is is no brainer territory for me. Like if I had a third quarterback here, like I have to do this. I don't care. I don't care about any of the other stuff. On the top yep. side, though, which is why I think it's not necessarily a decision. It ba it's based on stuff I don't have. If I, I, I am of the mindset now, especially in best ball, right? I'm going to win so many other trades. I'm going to get little value here, little value there, over and over and over. And I'm constantly going to be thinking about what I'm doing and what my plan is so that I have accrued all that stuff so that if I do need to make the overpay for quarterback, that I'll do it for that piece. So, like, if T-Rock is rostered appropriately and has a plan – it's an overpay probably in best ball, but I'm okay. I'm okay if I have, if I known that I'm going to make a trade like this when it becomes available, because you're not actually getting rid of anything that's elite quarterback yet. And you're getting one back, right? So if you've planned for this, it's okay up top. And I think on the bottom side, if you actually had three quarterbacks that are elite, I'll, I'll, I would do this on both sides, given those things. I think, it, I think where it could be convoluted is if now you're taking this bottom side, but you have no, no elite quarterbacks, I've been in the scenario where you think the value is all on depth, and if you don't have quarterbacks, it doesn't matter, even in start 12, because you need to have elite ones. So it's it, it can go both ways, and it could be a great trade, but there, there's other elements that make this possibly great for both sides or bad for both sides. 
I think it's a great point with the planning. If you've if you've pre planned to go on that weekend bender and you're like, you know what, whatever happens, happens, I'm I'm letting it rip, pull the trigger. You you got one of those a year where you can make like this and still recover. It's just you can't do three of them, miss out on two. Now now you're in trouble. So I agree with that. You got the pre planning is a huge point that people don't talk about. Right, and, and and I'm gonna blow it on one thing, and that's elite quarterback, and that's it. Other than that, we're staying yep. to the plan of just yep. getting value. All right, Scott. So we got, speaking of elite quarterbacks, uh, two in the same deal. Uh, for those on podcast, we got Justin Herbert and Trevor Lawrence acquired in the same deal by the same manager for a haul of picks, 102, 103, 104, 105, two 24s, and a 24-second. Scott, a lot of moving parts, two elite quarterbacks and start 11. Where does your mind go first? Well, I I can't envision a scenario where I would trade both Herbert and Lawrence in the same trade, regardless of what I'm getting. But then if for some reason I had the judgment lapse to do that, like this would almost be what I'm naming that I need to even consider it. So it's like at least the person had, it wasn't even about, can you give me enough value? A lot of times if I'm trading Lawrence or Herbert, most teams in the league do not even have enough pieces that I would be interested in to even get to the table. Damn, this is why but I'm this so team glad has- you're on. This is the thing. Six, somebody that has six firsts, which th- uh, four of them are in the top five in this class, almost yep. impossible across your leagues. Right, and, that, and that's the thing. is like I would say, okay, here's my price on Herbert. Here's my price on Lawrence. First of all, I probably wouldn't trade either one. But if I did, it would be – all right, I got to make that person feel it. You know, they're going to have to trade me 40% of the assets on their team to get that player. And just people don't, if I double that, because I'm trading away two of them, most rosters just don't have, if you told me add the two trades together and get enough, most teams, I just don't have enough that I could even put together to make this deal. So this is like a once in a million trade you're going to see because both sides are willing to play ball with the other. And they both have exactly what the other person is willing to spend their money on. Because that's the other thing. If I'm going to trade all these picks away right. that's, in it's, one it's, package, it's both sides. Of it's it. got to be the team that's willing to give me two elite quarterbacks. I don't want Justin Herbert and Justin Jefferson. I don't want Justin Herbert, C.D. Lamb, and another piece. Like It's got to be this. And then it's got to be the picks on both sides. So, I mean, just to break it down, it's a cop-out answer, but basically here's what I'm I'm looking at it as. Okay. I would take the two elite quarterbacks unless, unless there is somebody in my league that would be willing to play ball with letting me go by Lamar, letting me go by Watson, let me go by Kyler. Now, the, the hard part about that is someone in your league sees this deal goes down, they're going, damn, you just gave up the one price, or two. The one price or of the brick the just went up, or, man. Price of the brick just right, went so up, right? That Watson that you would have sold for that 102 and – you know, a first and a second, it now goes a 102 and 103 to get Watson. And now you're going, okay, well, you know, I could trade the 102 and the 105 for Watson and the 103 and the 104 for Lamar Jackson. You know what? I'd probably do that because now I'm sitting on Watson, Lamar, and I just netted two free firsts and a second. So if I can pull something like that off, which I think is possible, I can squint and say that I would take the picks. The biggest problem with that idea is when someone sees two elite quarterbacks move for this and I have an elite quarterback, Yeah, I'm probably not going out. Let me put him on the trade block. But right. if that person is, man, you, you could see where if you make two other trades, you just turn that package of picks into a contender that added multiple firsts and you still built the exact same way in a lineup league where I keep saying Lamar and Watson because those are like two a, a tier below Lawrence and Herbert. But man, if you're telling me I could add, you know, the 102 and the 105 for Watson and the 103 and a 24 first for Lamar, and both of them will just smash accept it. I'm sitting on an extra first and a 104 that I just banked. I think in that scenario, I take the package of picks, which is just blasphemy to me. But if if I can do that, fine. If I'm stuck making all the picks and I end up with Bryce Young, C.J. Stroud, Anthony Richardson, and Jackson Smith and Jigba and two future firsts, there's a lot of praying that's going on on my team for it to get back to where it was just two minutes before I made this deal. 
It's interesting. Uh, I, I'm not going to sit here, everybody watching the trade show here uh, on the weekend, and, and give you all the great points that Scott did in my own phrasing because you don't need that. He, he killed it. What I will touch on, one piece that he didn't t- t- talk about, which I actually really like, Scott, because you, you brought this up. Like if, if you sent all this away but you're not really rostered appropriately, it's like, okay, how do you make the rest up? But for me, I'll anchor. And here's the biggest thing. Like, this is clearly Schlump has absolutely hoarded because those 224s aren't even his. You still got your flexibility left, right? So imagine you could anchor down and still have a chance, if it didn't go right, to have Caleb now or Drake May or Marvin Harrison, right? This is a play that I think has so many wins on the top side. Now, in order to be able to send this, you not only have to have a bunch of picks, you have to have hoarded like crazy, which is really hard to do because – there, there's so many pieces that have to be done to get to have this much capital to send away. So I think that's a uh, an intricate trade in of itself. Um, and, and I'll say this, like we could be talking about next year, two of those quarterbacks, 102, 103, 104, 105, whoever it is, are top 12, 15 guys. And, you know, maybe one of them is cracking top 10. Like it looked pretty good towards the back half of the season. We're having a different discussion about this trade. But if I've accrued all these picks and I'm looking at my league and it's like it's lineup start 11, I think for these two guys, I mean, obviously there's a price point that's too much, but it's hard to make that. And so if I have the picks, I'll do it. And to your point, if you're not anchored, there's no way you're giving up the bottom side of picks either. No Because chance. now you're going like, essentially that's what I'm building my team around. Mm-hmm. And I just can, I just blew it all on two quarterbacks and now I'm searching for ways to get other assets. And what are people immediately going to come to you and want to do? Hey man, you want to pivot off that Herbert for a two for one, you know, and I'll give you some extra pieces in a start 11. If you're at a point where, you know, cause, cause to hoard those picks on the bottom, crazy it's either i got nothing and that's all i have and i'm now forced to make all the picks and and hope and pray or you just have and this is where i struggle i'm guessing you're what you're saying is true where he's got a bunch of other assets it is really hard for me to hand feed somebody that i know has three other first backfield in 24 to just hand feed them to herbert and lawrence side like it feels like even if i win this trade they still beat me. You right. know what I mean? That, like, that, even yes, if I hit yes. on two of the three rookies and I maybe get Marvin Harrison next year, they still beat me. Because no they have as many shots you next year as I do. I'm going to tell you something crazy I just thought of because you're talking about this. I'm, I'm going to tell you this guy, he's crazy enough to still have the 101. Now, if that's the case, what? goodness gracious. Never, could you imagine anchoring you would, and still being able to take Bijan? Yeah, yeah. But here's the thing: you would never on a on a trade show like this, you never get that context. But there's a lot of times where I have said, "Okay, I'm going to do this trade," but then I look around my league and I go, "What impact is it going to have on not just me, but who am I giving the pieces to, and how is that impacting some of the other players around in my league?" It's one of the things where I argue with my co-host on Trades in Five about this all the time. I love it. He goes, if I ever have, if I ever have three top nine, ten quarterbacks, he goes, I immediately trade one of them to make my team better. Oh man! I go, depends. You know what? No, depends. If I have three of the top nine, I'm going to be real selective which where I send that one of those quarterbacks. It's not Mm -hmm. about my team getting better. It's about my team getting better in parallel with your team. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying I don't want to help you, but if I'm helping you roster construct better at the position that matters, what are you giving me back? Right. And it's a 50 50 trade. I may have just traded away something on the surface that looks like it's 50 50, but in two or three months, I'm going to sit there and go, damn, that guy's roster constructed just as good as me. He's got an elite quarterback now that he got from me that is nullifying my biggest positional advantage that I already had in the first place. So, I mean, I think that is an undervalued thing in Dynasty is hoarding, 100%. keep playing, keep away, especially at QB and tight end. When you can keep away at those two positions, you're actually undervaluing that asset, sending it to somebody else, even if you're leaving some of the points on your bench. Because, two, imagine if, one, no one else is putting that elite quarterback in their roster. But, two, Mm -hmm. if something harmful happens to you, you can throw another quarterback in there? You got bye week solidified? I mean, goodness, that is wild to me. All right, Scott. 12-team best ball. uh, 
Starting two tight ends. Start 11 overall. Half point PPR, half point for a first down. Uh, CM Frank 2001 is getting DJ Moore, Terry McLaurin, Tony Pollard, Brandon Ayuk 211. Uh, sending it away, Amon Ross St. Brown, Breeze Hall, and the 306. Best ball makes this interesting. What do you think, Scott? Well, it's funny. He says two tight ends. I was expecting there to be a tight end in the trade, but there isn't. <laughs> right. He just, uh, he just let him know. It, well, it, you know, the, it does come down to, you know what, there's probably a better shot that that 211 gets the, yes. the, the shot yes. to move around and get a better shot at one of the tight ends that falls. If you've ever been in a two tight end league, like you will see in this year's class, you'll say six or seven gone by the end of the second. So that could matter. Most people would go, oh, 211, 306, that not a big deal. Two tight end league, it matters. It, it creeps you closer to where now – Someone's on the clock at 205 and you want a tight end, you're closer with that. You're not getting to the 205 from the 306. So I think that's a little bit of an underrated piece in some of these deeper, weirder formats. Yes. Plus all the all the things up top too, right? So let's say you actually were to get the last tier of tight ends that you cared about, and by 306 they kind of mm-hmm. run they run dry. Now all of a sudden I got okay, I don't have Brees Hall, but I got Tony Pollard who for a year gives me a sprint. And at running back, I start to treat the position more like a year or two at most, period. Yep. Um, yep. And then I get I'm three shots at replacing Amon Ra with DJ Moore, Brandon mm-hmm. Ayuk, and Terry McLaurin. I want that. So I'll be honest, man. I'm having a really hard time with the bottom side, period. I'm taking the four for two. Give me the four pieces and the pick upgrade and yep. best ball, start 11, two tight end. I think that 211 is much more live in this format. And I mean, I literally look at it like I'm trading away Amon Ra and I'm getting back. DJ Moore and Terry McLaurin, and I'm trading away Brees Hall. I'm getting back Brandon Ayuk and Tony Pollard. I mean, yep. best ball principles, you would say a lot of times you want to take those two for one as long as they're in startable range, and all those guys are. So, yeah, I'm taking the top side. 100%, man. Um, I do realize we actually have one last one to get to here. Uh, it's 12-team Superflex PPR lineup start nine. We got a Mahomes deal, man. Mahomes or okay. Kyler 104 and 111. What do you think? Come on, I'll pay this for Mahomes all day. I All day. To, I, this one's not close, Red Words. I, I put it in here just to see. Um, and that was it, man. So we ended it that way just because I, I knew that Scott wouldn't care. Like, I, I think in lineup start nine, you have to understand it's very different from lineup start 12 and best ball. And Mahomes in lineup start nine for me is one of the people that I'm just going to pay for. Like, I, I'll even overpay. It's again talking about the vacation stuff, right? Like, I want that in lineup start nine. Like there's, it's hard to put a price on if I can anchor down elite quarterbacks, you have to catch up to me. And Mahomes, I think one thing we didn't touch on that we started to, Mahomes in this year won the MVP after people said, you know, he was going at 103, Scott, right? So Herbert and Allen were going ahead of him because Tyreek Hill was gone. So the guys that don't have like super Konami code, they're like, oh, they have to have weapons. So you take what people thought was his best weapon away, and he won the MVP and put up his best season ever. I want that guy in lineup start nine. So I'm willing to send 104 and 111 for a guy that was going to be hurt early in the year. Uh, I, I do think, like, I understand why people would, would tear down, but I'm not doing that. I, I think the major thing with that trade is you'd be really co- really careful on the market perception of the players you're getting back when you're trading Mahomes. If you insert a different player in there, then fine. But it's Kyler Murray. There's a there's I like Kyler Murray, but it would be naive for me to sit here and say that even if he comes back, there's still not some rocky waters for him to have to wade through because of who he is. He's an outlier already. He's small. There's always been some negative perception on his character, his work ethic. There's a shot the Cardinals are going to be in. There's too many red flags for me to go. All right, Kyler. Is Kyler Murray going to bounce back and play football? Yes. He's probably going to play this year, and I wouldn't be shocked if the second half of the year he still manages to crack like the top 12. I know people are writing him off this year, but when I can get rid of an asset that has a little bit of uh, some rust on it already, and I'm getting Mahomes, Mm -hmm. like I'm dumping risk. Even though I may lose that trade from I'm helping someone else a little bit, I, I feel like I'm getting rid of the right kind of assets. That Kyler and that 111 looks great on paper until they're on your roster, and then you look at it and go, Ugh, man, I'd love to consolidate these pieces. And why did I trade that Mahomes? 100%, man. I, I, it was interesting. Scott uh, came came here and uh, helped us with the trade show. He is a 
I, I'll tell you this. Scott is probably the best dynasty mind out there. Love chopping it up with him. I think one of the crazy parts, Scott, though, for this show is the amount of crazy trades and big name quarterbacks that are being moved still right now is is it, it's wild to me because I don't see that a lot of times in the leagues I'm in that often. And I'm looking at the trade show like, man, what? All these elite quarterbacks constantly moving with picks. It's uh go go out there and try to get them. Understand your league, understand your settings. I think that's what we talk about here. Um, Scott, I want to have you plug your stuff, but before we do, I just want to make sure if you're here and you want your deals featured on this show, you want to come flex it. You got my homes. Uh, you send away Kyler and some fluff. Uh, do that. Patreon.com forward slash South Harmon. Um, a dollar a month gets you in the door. Uh, if you want to have, you know, Mike tell you how great or bad it was, he will he will do that flamboyantly. Uh, also here, you know, with, with Scott and the Destination Debbie crew, um, we have a contest going on. If you do want to get more best ball information, uh, make sure you're taking advantage of our promo code 40 chess for the underdog app. Uh, we're going to be running live drafts with Mike and myself here as soon as he gets back from gallivanting all across the country um, and other countries as well. So uh, use the promo code 40 chess. You can get a hundred percent deposit match back, whether it's 10, a hundred dollars. Um, so take advantage of that in our best ball principles. Other than that, Scott, man, appreciate you hopping on. Uh, if you got anything you want to plug um, before we get out of here. I think everyone knows probably where to find me from uh, Destination Devi. Mostly everything I do podcast form is over there. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, which a lot of people probably are, uh, just check out Dynasty Trades in 5. Like It kind of jives with this type of format where it's just trade question after trade question. Uh, Got to give it up to Adam to, uh, for the presentation with this. I'm actually getting the trades up there, good graphics and stuff like that. But if you like this, you'll like Dynasty Trades in 5 if you haven't already checked it out. So that's what I'll plug. Check that out. We live stream every Tuesday night. 8 30 p.m eastern unless otherwise noted sometimes we have to reschedule but uh yeah check that out as well that's what i would say uh probably f- suits the audience that'll be tuning into this so appreciate you having me on again man oh yeah absolutely man uh always love kicking it with scott hope you guys enjoyed having scott on here um if you enjoyed his stuff please put it down in the comments let us know that um also make sure you're checking him out on dynasty trades and five i know you guys are because on tuesdays when we do ama uh we get obliterated because Dynasty Trades in 5 is just is the place to be. So, uh, Scott, appreciate your time, man. Appreciate you hopping on with us. I hope everyone here understands you know, how important quarterbacks are and how different they are for the different markets. I think that was one of the themes today. So make sure you're applying this to your league. I hope you guys are having a great weekend. We will see you back here, same time, same place, next week. We're out of this thing. Peace. <laughs>